Thank you for tuning in to Sense Per Mile. I'm your host, Charles Gracie, and this is my co-host, Paul Gibson. Hey, Charles. Um, I know I'm normally behind the camera. So Paul's not here. I know it's hard to tell by looking behind me and seeing that amazing cutout that I did, but that's actually not Paul. Oh, well, that's disappointing. Well, hey, we're just going to have to keep the show moving forward, and uh, we'll have Paul here in spirit and awkward still frame picture. Yeah, it's kind of creeping me out a little bit that he's uh, sitting behind me. I'm, I'm regretting my choices and feel like he's here, even though he's not here. I'm okay with it, because on my end, it looks like he's staring at you and not me, so it's not so creepy. <laughs> All right, well, welcome to Sense Per Mile. Today is our Halloween episode. And for today's episode, we got a couple exciting things for you. We got a couple drivers that are going to share their spooky, scary Halloween experiences on the road. I love Halloween. It's one of my favorite holidays. Um, whether it's decorating, whether it's taking my family out and let them enjoy the haunted houses, the candy apples, caramel apples, the whole shebang. It's, it's one of my most favorite holidays. I might have been accused of going a little overboard at times with it. I was at your house just a couple weeks ago, and I can confidently say, I don't think you went overboard, but you were flirting with it just, just a little bit. Your neighbors either love you or hate you. So on that topic, uh, it's no secret that I put up the fog machines. I was actually on the phone with Paul, and at that time, the neighbors walked out of their houses down, and they're like four or five houses down the block. Because the fog machine, uh, the low, heavy fog that I bought for it was drifting down the street. It fogged up the entire block. They thought something was on fire. Oh, my God. I, <laughs> I may have gone overboard with the foggers. Paul can testify for how creepy that house is at night. Isn't that right, Paul? Nothing. Man, a few words today. Man, a few. He just, just doesn't seem like himself, you know? So... For today's episode, I told you we're going to bring a couple drivers that we're going to share their experiences with us. Today's guest is Gabby. She's an OTR truck driver. I've known Gabby for some time right now. I follow you on Facebook, and I know you have two pals that you carry in the truck with you around Halloween time. And I'm pretty sure they got names. You want to introduce them to the audience? I got Ted that's with me, who is my skeleton that sits in the driver's seat, who scare everybody because it's hilarious and then i have my dog that's with me which he's just always with me and then if you really truly really want to think about it i also have two skeleton heads that sit on my dash that freak everybody out and that is fred and ted jr so I saw the post that you had up where you had them uh, helping with pre-trip and they were hanging out on your bull guard. My buddy that was with me that we met up, that was his skeleton that he has with him on the truck. We call him DP. Oh, nice. So you guys both rolling around with co-drivers that are skeletons. Yeah, actually there's like four of us. Do you get to drive in the HOV lane because you got your skeleton with you? Unfortunately, no. Are you sure? Have you tested it? I I have. <laughs> So, all right, and now I, now that I, you answered you have, now we got to go deeper down this rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's just put it as uh, Texas. I, I just got my ass ringed about it <laughs> by the officer and a very educated, educated lesson on what not to go in the, the HOV lane when you have a skeleton. So for the audience, just so you know, skeletons do not count as an actual person in the HOV lane per Gabby and her infinite wisdom on the road and testing this slightly. Uh, but they did have to find it a little bit funny. I'm sure there was a smile cracked at some point. But. There was because he came up to me at first laughing and asking what I am doing. I'm like, well, there's traffic. This is moving. That's sitting. I'm moving. So, moving. In the spirit of today's episode, we're talking Halloween themed, scary stories, funny Halloween themed stories on the road, things that only today's trucking heroes would see with their miles that they're gaining on the road and all the weird things that they might encounter. And with you being a driver for as long as you have and being a road driver, I thought it was important to bring you on the show. I, I kind of had some discussions with you and I thought it was something that belonged on the show. 
Um, we talked to a lot of drivers in preparation for today's episode, and one of the most common things was the black dog. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the black dog? Uh, the black dog it mainly shows up when you have pushed yourself past your limit. I've done that in, actually, I've done that a few years ago, back in 2019, around Halloween. Because I wasn't, I was at that time, I was looking at the money situation, not really sleeping like I should, power nap here and there, and just pushing myself just to make that extra dollar. And around like 5.30 in the morning on Halloween, it, of course, it was snowing and everything, and I see something running across the road in front of me and then immediately stopped and at that point in time I, I seen the dog like it was the dog it was the black dog you know I hit black ice at that point when I hit my brake so you saw the dog right before you hit the black ice it was kind of your uh, paranormal yeah. warning that hey something bad's about to transpire yes and so when we talk black dog, just so the viewers can get a visual on what we're talking are we talking like a little small chihuahua black dog are we talking big like doberman it's almost like a size of a doberman but it's got that rock baller body and added to like it's right there you know it's there you i think know? it might be like a driver's spirit dog where like if it was me i'd probably have one of those small like uh little wiener dogs that cross in the street you know cute ones that bounce <laughs> when they bark look like they have batteries in them when i seen it i hit the brake just right before i hit the black eyes and I, regardless, I still hit the black guys because I was 43,000 pounds at that time. And that was one of the scariest moments of my life because I had a tree line, like a forest on one on the uh, right side of me and a ditch on the left side of me. And I was going back and forth trying to get underneath my trailer and back under control. About the fourth time, I just, at that point, I said, yeah, I can't get under control. I'm not going towards the trees because that's going to hurt a lot worse than that did. It would be safe to say that this black dog presents itself uh, when a driver's gone past capacity from what I've heard and what you're sharing with us or when they've gotten too greedy. And it's kind of a reality check on what should be important when you're in the truck. In diving into this story a little bit, I actually talked to several drivers that mentioned this, and it kind of caught me off guard because I've, I've never personally had the black dog experience. Um, but I was shocked at how many drivers had talked about it. When you mentioned Halloween, scary stories, uh, it came up quite often. So it's not just isolated to one driver or a group of drivers. It's, it's kind of one of the folk stories that go with trucking. And in most cases, it's to raise awareness right before something bad happened to wake a driver up that might have been driving past their threshold of what's safe when they're too tired or when they've gotten too cocky and maybe they're going too fast for conditions. Uh, it's like another story that I know of. I haven't personally experienced it, but my father has because he's a driver. And he was driving one day out of just pushing himself too far. He was riding 18-hour days. And he's driving in the middle of the night on a winter night and this white la this lady in a white dress popped out of nowhere right in front of him and he saw he hit a lady and everything and he slammed on the brakes but he didn't when he was going downhill but he didn't realize he was on uh black ice uh he ended up rolling his truck and everything in the uh at the bottom of the hill into the cornfield and stuff like that. He told me that he don't remember much of it, but waking up to the paramedic and the truck driver that was behind him who stopped at the top of the hill. And they don't know how he survived the accident, but thankfully he did. Because it was, it was a nasty one because he just, he pushed himself to past his limit. Myself being a driver, like I said, I didn't get to experience any of these. Uh, it was actually a shocker that I hadn't even heard about them until I started asking these questions in preparation for today's show. So 
after talking to one driver and hearing it and then another driver and hearing it, as I'm talking to my fellow drivers and I'm hearing the same story over and over again, I, I thought it had a place for today's show. So I was really glad that you were able to, you know, come on to the show, share your experience and uh, why we have you here in the spirit of happy Halloween and Halloween themed. I can't let you get off the show without asking you candy corn. Is it the winner for Halloween? Nope. <laughs> well, hey, Gabby, I, I appreciate you sharing your experience and coming on the show. And I, I look forward to uh, hearing more stories in the future from you. But uh, for now, be safe. Have a happy Halloween. And thank you for everything you do. It sounds like she's saying that the black dog and as well as the lady in white is there to almost warn truck drivers and not so much put them in danger but warn them that there is danger coming am i understanding that right yeah so you are um it's one of those things that as i was digging into this a little bit what i found was that it shows up right before something bad's about to happen and and it almost sounds like the reason it shows up is to raise their alertness levels uh to allow them the reaction time to avoid that incident from happening and generally, it'll show up in preparation for that event because they're too tired or they've overworked themselves or they've been chasing the dollar so long they, they got too comfortable or complacent on the road. And it's the same story over and over again, but just across a big majority of drivers. Yeah, with it being that many people having that happen across the board, there's got to be some kind of truth behind that. Uh, whether you believe it or not, something is uh, warning these truck drivers that they are pushing it too far. Yes. And, and so for our viewers out there, you know, for our fellow drivers that are watching this right now, please leave in the comments your experience. I, I'm very interested to see how many people have encountered this black dog and, and what type of black dog. I'm my own personal interest on that one. And the woman in the white dress. It seems like these are both figures that have shown up to almost essentially save a driver's life right before a dangerous situation occurred. Yeah, definitely. So uh, who, who you got lined up next for us, Charles? Who's our, uh, who's, our, who's our next guest on this Halloween special? So our next guest is Brian. Brian's been a uh, very big figure as far as a role model for me as a driver when I was driving and uh, as far as for just conversations in general as I was progressing through my career. It's someone I've kept in touch with, played a big role in my growth. So welcome to Sense Per Mile, Brian. Well, thank you. I'm excited to have you on the show. You know, it's our Halloween episode. Um, what I found interesting when we were talking to our last guest is she brought up her side of her insights on the black dog, the woman in the right white dress, uh, her dislike for candy corn. And uh, now we're bringing you on. And I'm really excited about the story about you and your buddy uh, going down that one highway when they had an unexpected occurrence. So why don't you lead the way with that? Everybody should know it's a famous highway. It's called the Devil's Highway. It's, it runs through New Mexico and Nevada. They actually changed the name of the highway. It used to be Highway 666 on the road, uh, road signs and everything. They actually changed the signs of the highway. So we were sitting down, me and my buddy were sitting down in a truck stop. We were sharing stories and he told me this and I told him, nah, you're lying. And he insisted on having everything else. He was running down the devil's highway and, uh, he's just cruising along, you know, you got the moonlight shining on you. You know, you get to play that good old game of let's shut the headlights off and drive by the moonlight. Well, that's what he did. Well, not too shortly after he shut his headlights off, you know, he's checking for his mirrors, looking, you know, you do your normal driver thing. And he said he had a figure of a person sitting in the seat next to him. Like when we say person, um, I know that could be creepy in itself if you're in the truck rolling down the highway by yourself and then all of a sudden you look over and wow. there's someone in your truck that you didn't anticipate being there. Uh, oh, yeah. Did, like, what can you imagine the reaction being on something like that? Well, with this guy, uh, probably scared him out of his mind. You know, he did this. 
this guy, he was a real docile guy, you know, uh, real nice guy, always helped everybody, always did everything, you know, never believed in ghosts and goblins and everything else like that. And I told him, I said, oh, you run that devil's highway, you're going to come across some of them. And he said that uh, this guy, he was sitting in the chair as plain as day. Brian, you know, we've had a couple conversations and uh, in the interest of our Halloween themed episode and being that we're a podcast for drivers and for the trucking industry, one of the things I, I kept hearing when I was prepping uh, for this episode was about the woman in the white dress, the black dog. So I know in our conversation, you had mentioned you had seen the black dog. You know, what was this encounter like for you? When you realize what you've seen, it's one of those oh shit moments. You're running down the road and you're going. You don't initially think that you're seeing the black dog. You initially think you're seeing a pair of headlights off in the distance. Then as you get closer to these lights and the lights are getting closer to you, uh, it's, you know, it's, you're thinking, okay, I'm seeing a car, I'm seeing a car, I'm seeing a car. And then it's right there in front of you and it jumps right on the hood of your truck like it's coming right at you in through the windshield. So when you say black dog, you know, when we're envisioning black dog, as I said earlier, for me, I think it's something that's uh, attached that's got a meaning to the driver while they're on the road to raise their alertness in a situation before something bad's about to happen. Um, For for me, it's like a little chihuahua that bounces when it barks. But for you, when you saw a black dog, what kind of dog do you see? Uh, Kind of like a mix between... A Rottweiler and a Doberman Pinscher, you put those two dogs together, and that's about what you see. Is it, like, very definitively, like, a real dog? Is it mean-looking? Is it more, like, going to lick your face, or is it going to eat your face? It it looks like it's coming charging to attack you. Okay. Uh, jumping up across that hood, mouth open, slobber jawing, going, everything. Like, and then it's like, you... you you flinch and you jump, and then it's like you, you close your eyes and you flinch. And then you open your eyes, and then it's gone. Yeah, it seems like from what I've gathered, it, it really presents itself right before, like uh, our past guest was saying, that they about hit black ice, and it raised their alertness because they were tired. And uh, yep. from the other drivers I've talked to, it seems like uh, the, the overall consensus here is, when a driver gets too complacent, too cocky, too tired, driving beyond their limits or outside of conditions for the current road, that's when it presents yep. itself, right, to kind of raise that alertness to avo- avoid a situation that might be catastrophic. Oh, well, yeah. Well, needless to say, I seen that, and I just, like, I got off the highway because I was not, I was not on a four lane. I was not on a major interstate. I was on a two lane highway running through uh, Arizona. And that's when I seen it. And I found the next place that I could find to pull over. And that was it. I, I bunked it for the night. You know, I appreciate you coming on and sharing your experience with us. And uh, in the interest of our Halloween episode, it was really important that we shared this. But I, I also found it very educational that it was something that here we have multiple individuals with the same encounter of a similar occurrence. So thank you for your time. But before I let you go, I got two yeah. questions for you. One, who is Uh-oh. your favorite character for Halloween? That would have to be a uh, like a vampire. Like any vampire, like old school Dracula with the pointy ears or new school Dracula where they look like everyone else. I would else. have to say like, uh, like the Van Helsing Dracula. I thought he was really cool. All right. Now, this one, this, this could be our friendship on the line here. What's your favorite Halloween candy? My favorite Halloween candy. You're, gonna, you're, you're really pushing my age here. <laughs> I like popcorn balls. Nice. Classic. Kudos, Brian. It's like you can't have, you can never have too much of it. It's salty, it's sweet, and 
And you just don't see them much in the trick-or-treating bags. Like, you know, being the responsible no, parent no. I am, I go through my kids' candy after trick-or-treating, and maybe that's my uh, excuse to kind of grab at least one or two of my top choices out of there before, you know, this isn't good for you, son. It's called dad tax. Yeah, dad tax. There you go. You got to take the little Hershey bar or the little Nestle's bar, you know. Well, <laughs> hey, I appreciate you, Brian, carving out some time to join us on this celebratory Halloween episode of Cents Per Mile. Thank you for everything you do, not only for the industry, but for everyone out there that's got anything that's on their table in their house. Uh, thank you. Hey, always got time for you. I got to say, a popcorn balls are a solid choice. They're very classic. They're not personally my favorite. I'm honestly not a big fan of popcorn. I do love Halloween. You sent me some videos. Uh, let's talk about that first one you sent. What, what kind of doll was that on that truck on the highway? That was a good guy doll. So what you're seeing here is there's this truck barreling down the road. And there's this family in a car. And just imagine, put yourself in their shoes, looking over and seeing good guy doll, Chucky. Sitting on the driver's step, just sitting there with his little knife waving around, saying hello, hair waving in the wind. I mean, imagine the response. I mean, my little guy is terrified of Chucky. I bought one as part of my Halloween display, and he, took, he made me swear never to bring that thing in the house. I can just imagine his face barreling down the road with a semi next to him, and Chucky's on the steps. Yeah, it's like your kids, you're, you're, you know, counting license plates or things like that to pass road trip time. And it's like, hey, mom, what's that? Oh, dear God. You know, and it's just Chucky. It's not like it's, it's not Chucky one. We're talking like this is like three or four Chucky movies in. This was a creepy looking Chucky. Yeah, the stitched face and, you know, a little rough around the edges. It's like you're playing that. I see something with creepy red hair waving to the wind. Now, as creepy as that one was, the second one you sent me that gave me the Mad Max vibes, uh, the, it, it reminded me, what was that movie called? It was called uh, Maximum Overdrive. Where it, Did you ever see that movie where the truck comes alive and it starts chasing people yeah. down? That truck, uh, the video you sent me, we can put it up so our viewers can see. It, 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 yeah. I would poop my pants if that was behind me barreling up. So there's a couple thoughts that go through my mind when I look at this truck. So, one, as a driver, I'm th thinking everything on the truck's got to work. Otherwise, DOT is going to stop you. There's so many pieces of this truck, the chain link hanging and all that. I'm just like, this looks like a pre-trip nightmare. Uh, I, the second thing is, it's the most badass thing I've seen driving on the road. Like, I would drive this truck. I, I would rock this truck. Uh, kudos to the driver out there that owns this truck. That was a lot of hard work. It looks amazing. And uh, definitely sure this truck's won some awards because, I mean, this thing screams highway to hell all day. The spirit of Halloween is strong with our drivers out there. So kudos to all of you that are out there carrying that spirit, making the other drivers feel like they're at home, even though they may not be like big round of applause. I know. You. I know Paul's definitely uh, clapping in spirit. He it just doesn't seem the same. <laughs> Paul's very few words today. So. That's my co-host, Paul Gibson, and today we were joined by our producer, Josh Haynes. Let's let's not tell Paul, and I'll just sneak into the episodes from here on out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to Sense Per Mile. Have a happy Halloween.